Today we want to discover the story behind Porsche's and Audi's superior anti-rust steel bodies and the development of aluminium car bodies. At the end of the 1960s, car technology developed quickly. Cars got a lot faster and more reliable. But a huge problem, especially at Porsche, was corrosion. Even after just two to three years, 911s started to rust. What made it worse for the 911 was its air-cooled rear engine. That meant that the whole rear end, including rear wheel arches, got very hot while driving. When the car was parking and cooling down, cooler, moist and in winter salty ambient air was sucked into the rear of the car and it started to rust everywhere. The worst corrosion problems always came from the skiing resorts in Germany and Austria. A famous word within the Porsche company at this time was Garmisch-Partenkirchen. That's a famous skiing resort with lots of Porsches, lots of snow and lots of salt. And angry 911 owners sometimes called Porsche already after two years from Garmisch-Partenkirchen because their torsion bar rear axle collapsed because of rust and the 911's rear wheels disappeared in the wheel arch. Porsche's technical director at that time was the young Ferdinand Piech. He started a project with the German steel factory Krupp and built three 911s in stainless steel in the 1960s. They tried to build the whole body in stainless steel, but they damaged their machines for the inner complex parts, so they decided to just use the tough material for the outer skin. The problem was the high price and so the stainless steel 911 in the 1960s didn't make it to production. But Piech was working on sheet metal which was galvanized on both sides for the rear parts of the 911. That solved the problem, but it added 74 d mark per car. After Piech had to leave the company, because the family decided that no family members are allowed to be in active positions at Porsche anymore, his successor Fuhrmann saved that money again and two years later the angry phone calls from Garmisch-Partenkirchen once again started. Porsche got into so much trouble because of these 911 corrosion problems that Fuhrmann decided to fully galvanize the whole body of the 911 from 1976. In the meantime, Piech was working for Audi and he faced the same corrosion issues again. Audis were popular for their good reliability and high engineering quality, but rust was a big issue. Audi had very old painting facilities and car bodies were designed close to the limit. That means that if customers got unlucky, their new Audi started to rust after just two years and if sheets got any thinner, there was a high risk of cracks. Then the Porsche 924 project came up. Originally designed as a sports car for Audi, the new VW CEO Tony Schmücker stopped the project because of the oil crisis and because VW already had a new sports car with the new Scirocco. Porsche bought the project to finish it, but negotiated with Audi to produce the 924 in the old NSU plant in Neckars-Ulm, now an Audi factory. It was a win-win situation. Porsche didn't want to hear the word Garmisch-Partenkirchen again and was now producing all cars with fully galvanized bodies, so the Audi plant in Neckars-Ulm gained that knowledge too. Porsche, on the other hand, didn't have to extend their own factory and could use the free capacities for the new 928. For Piech, who became Audi CTO in 1974, it was clear that the new Audi 100 C3 will be built with this know-how and a fully galvanized body to solve Audi's corrosion problems once and for all, just like Porsche before. But now VW CEO Tony Schmücker intervened. He couldn't afford yet to have fully galvanized bodies for VW models and he didn't want Audi to be better. So he didn't allow Audis to have fully galvanized bodies and even mentioning that word in advertisements wasn't allowed. Piech on the other hand always wanted Audi to be better than mother VW and so they produced the first Audi 100 C3s with a not galvanized roof because that's the part with the lowest risk of corrosion and still gave a 10 year body warranty. Shortly after, the VW CEO changed, the Audi 100 could be fully galvanized and Audi used it everywhere in advertisements. The effect on the used car market was significant. Audi's depreciation used to be 30% if you immediately sold a new car again. With the fully galvanized bodies, the depreciation reduced to just 15%, which was the same level as Mercedes. Audi's marketing department found that customers are now prepared to pay 500 d mark more for a car, while the additional production costs for Audi were just around 100 d mark. Of course, 
PH planned the same technology for the new Audi ATB3, but the production manager said that it wouldn't be possible for these high production numbers. PH fired him and the Audi ATB3 came on the market with a fully galvanized body. And even today, 40 years later, the Audi ATB3 is a solid oldtimer with no body rust issues. So Porsche and Audi were far ahead of the competition in terms of anti-rust bodies in the 1980s. They even patented the two-side protection technology for five years to prevent competitors from catching up, because alternative technologies were much too expensive. VW still didn't use fully galvanized bodies until 1993 when Piech became VW CEO. And he even pushed it further. The VW group now gave 12 years of body warranty and the protection even stayed intact after a crash. Parallel to that, Piech, who was always interested in lightweight technology and aerospace, was thinking about aluminium bodies during his time at Audi, as the next big topic after fully galvanized bodies. Aluminium was nothing new and was used in the car industry every now and then, but a fully aluminium body for a mass production car was something new. Piech's idea was to solve the corrosion issue and save weight to compensate the Quattro all-wheel drive's additional weight. So that an Audi with Quattro can be the same weight or even lighter than the competition with rear wheel drive. He could see the challenges at beer cans. They are painted steel cans and aluminium cans. Aluminium cans are more expensive, but you can recycle them, and only then you have a business case. Recycled aluminium is just one third of the price. So Piech visited beer can manufacturers and teamed up with the largest aluminium company in the world, Alcoa. In their home market in the US, car manufacturers were less interested in reducing weight and fuel consumption. So Audi and Alcoa worked together for more than 10 years to develop the aluminium technology in a profitable way. Since aluminium has different properties to steel, you cannot just produce the same parts in the other material. You need a new structure and larger profiles to get the same strength and stiffness, but can still be lighter than steel. Audi called that the Audi space frame. Alcoa paid most of the development work and Audi concentrated on developing welding technology and production strategies. A second partner in this development was Ferrari, but their development speed was a bit slower than Piech's. So in the end, it wasn't Audi or Ferrari, it was Honda. The Honda NSX came on the market in 1990 as the first car with a full aluminium body, but it had around the same weight as competitors with steel bodies. Audi actually had the same problem with their Quattro Spider, so Piech cancelled the project right before production and saved the embarrassment. But they used the experiences to make the A8 better. Learn all about that in my other video. The Audi A8 D2 came on the market in 1994 and it fulfilled Piech's wish. It was lighter with Quattro all-wheel drive than the competition with steel body and rear-wheel drive. And by the way, the costs for Audi were dramatic and the project was only possible because then Audi CEO Piech sent the CFO into retirement and took his job as well. So Piech gave the green light and Audi had another unique selling point. Ferrari needed a bit longer and presented the 360 Modena with an aluminium monocoque in 1999. Unfortunately, it wasn't really lighter than the competition and even heavier than the predecessor with steel body. But these projects paved the way for future developments and also the steel body technology developed further pretty quickly because of the pressure from the aluminium side. So I hope you liked this look back in history and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for early access and more videos like this. See you at the next one.